and welcome. Wow, the light sure dims a lot when I suddenly hit play. I swear I have all this wonderful light until I hit record, and then it's gone. In any case, for those of you that are uh, uh, that enjoyed these videos, I could use some thoughts and prayers and energy towards uh, manifesting a new laptop and a little bit better lighting. Uh, but until I get there, I'm going to enjoy this energy of doing it from the car because it's just a comfortable place for me to do it. And I'm kind of laughing because I already did part of this reading and then ran out of storage because I got... I got a little excited and did several videos at once, and I only have so much room. And the the funny thing is, though, the card that this is a collective reading for everybody. I should have said that at first. Um, that's that's a lot of the energy going on. It not you know just collectively for everybody is that. Oh, I jumped a little too fast, you know, or I got excited and I went forward a little bit. Now I got to come back just a little bit, and. Part of that is because we have so much energy in Leo. We have Mercury that just went in, went direct from Cancer and popped right back into Leo like today. And we have Mars that's in Aries and really building up to its height and its energy. We have the Moon just popped from Aquarius full Moon into Pisces. And we have Mercury... Well... It's not Mercury placements in there. We have Saturn and Capricorn, which is creating those restrictions. But... Um, I already did part of this reading, and the funny thing is the chariot card is what popped out, and this is kind of uh, energy for everybody, and, and it's funny because it's about travel and it's about vehicles. I don't know if we can see. I'm going to try to have my light up here so you can see. And I was called to several things. So one, this card, I've seen it pulled two different ways. It has a lot of cancer energy. It's typically associated with cancer if you look it up, but it's also associated with Leo, um, mostly because of the Sphinx energy in there, the lion energy, and because of that sacral or solar plexus energy going on. But I noticed something in the card today when I was looking at it that I haven't noticed before, and it's that these little... Uh, shoulder pads that he's got going on up here. Uh, it's hard to see in the video, but they're they're crescent moons, and then there's a face in them. And I never noticed that before. And one of the faces is kind of doing this like grrr look, and the other face is kind of like mm, smirking. And what I'm I've been getting, a, I've been seeing a lot of references to things like Beetlejuice lately or Problem Child, the movie, and I'm getting a sense that there's a fair amount of bratty energy coming in, but that can go, that can go either way. That can be like playful banter and fun, or that can be like, oh no, you shouldn't have just tried to play with me that way. And that's kind of like, I'm getting those those cross themes of energy, especially with the moon right now in uh, Pisces. So for the next 48 hours precisely, we're going to have sun in Leo, sun, Mercury in Leo with moon in Pisces energy. That's fire against water. That's like one of the hottest uh, astrological signs and placements. And we're in the middle of the heat of the summer with one of the coldest, most in-depth, emotional uh signs that there is Pisces and it's so it's like the individual and the personal power and the drive to manifest to create momentum that's what this card is really about is momentum and it's being overshadowed by this emotional you know energy of the past of exes of apologies that still need to be spoken or uh, forgiveness that needs to be accepted and I'm getting I'm still getting a lot of this, the song, uh, the another one bites the dust, but the other song that has been coming through to me a lot as I've been thinking about this collective reading is, uh, Operator by Jim, uh, Jim Croce and the, the line, will you help me write this song? And as far as I remember, that song is about trying to get a message out and getting disconnected or it's not coming out in quite the right way or the words that you say just don't seem to fit where your heart feels and so that's kind of this energy that's going on for everybody collectively now <laughs> in the deck on the bottom we have the four of wands which 
for any of you that are aware that you've been on a twin flame journey, you might find that this is a much bigger theme going on for the, at least the next 48 hours, if not more. Otherwise, you might find that you're, um, you're, you're really wanting for and craving for a stable, for roots, for a home, for emotional connection, for somebody that you can really communicate with on a level that you, I mean, if you've experienced with them, you already know, and you probably know who it is. If you haven't, then you're really seeking that connection with them. But this is like, you know, the, the happy home, happy life card, and it's in your heart right now. And, the, and with all this, this is a lot of this personal power energy. So, and then on the back, or sorry, on the top of the deck, we have the Knight of Wands in reverse. Again, more Leo energy and more communication energy also. And with this being the, the major theme, momentum, what I'm seeing is that people were collectively wanting to kind of ride off of the previous cancer energy that came in and to really be able to open our hearts. Leo is one of the most heartfelt signs in the Zodiac, the most generous, the most magnanimous, but it's also the one that you don't want to mess with. So if you have been not in your hmm, integrity, you've not been speaking your truth, you've been creating delays, um, or you've been with somebody who's been doing those things, you're ready to break free of that. This I've also <laughs> I've also been getting a, a lot of uh, Freddie Mercury, the Queen's uh, um, I Want to Break Free song in there, you know, like you're, you're, you're tired of the image, the illusion that Pisces and Moon energy is bringing in the illusions and saying that many people thought that they had this happy home situation, but they don't. And they're recognizing what they really have is a whole lot of delays and stagnation. And they're feeling bratty about it, feeling very rabble rocks about it. Um, underneath this card, the very first one under there is the high priestess in reverse. Now, in upright, this is like that intuitive glow, that guiding light, divine feminine in there. In reverse, it is somebody who uses secrets to hurt. Either they withhold things or they omit things um, so that you don't, they don't have to pay the consequences of what's going on or so that you have to pay worse consequences than they do. And it's, and or it's somebody who uses that same, you know, they might out your secrets uh, to get you in trouble or because you're not doing something that, that they want and that could be a bit of this impetuous energy and so it's either you or they the people around you they're tired of waiting for something they've been waiting for some sort of communication or you've been waiting for something and you're getting impatient about it and but the irony is spirit has brought these things in for a reason um, there's a lot of us who are learning to heal uh inner childhood wound inner childhood wounds, we're doing the inner work, the shadow work, and really recognizing where our mother wounds are and where we've been holding ourselves back in attempt to kind of rescue damsels in distress who either don't need it or we are playing the victim when we really aren't the victim. We need to stand in our personal power and we're not right now. A lot of people are not. They've been holding back. But this Four of Cups in reverse is actually a good sign. It means emotional breakthrough, as is this Devil in reverse, which means releasing toxic connections. The Devil in Upright is actually a very good card. It's fun. It's lust. It's hedonism. Um, it's positive commitments. It's Saturn energy. and It's Capricorn's card. It can mean a lot of things uh, coming in, and a lot of people don't recognize that in that card even it can show the eternal bonds that we have through spirit, and that we are we are more than just in the 3D. We are above, middle, and below. We are all around, and so is spirit. Now, in, But in reverse, that's that icky, toxic energy. And a lot of times, it is the revealing of commitments and entanglements and codependencies and addictions and things of that nature that we've gotten ourselves entangled in to attempt to avoid that, emo you know, that emotional breakthrough. But... Spirit is kicking in, and, and especially I, what I'm sensing too with this and this um, is there's been a lot of uh, a lot of predictions early on that around this time. Actually, we're a little bit early, but um, they predicted that in a few months we'd be seeing a lot more uh, breakups and quarrels and things of that nature because of quarantine, because of being stuck in close quarters. You really get to know the person that you picked, and you can't avoid them as easily through work, and you can't avoid your own triggers 
scars and emotional wounds because of that. And you could uh, even the kindest, most caring, most uh, patient and temperate person is going to have their limit. And right now we're we're starting to see people already hitting that limit. Um, if you are feeling called to have stronger boundaries right now, go ahead and do it. But when you get when you get triggered and you see a need to have a boundary, look within yourself and figure out how it is that either you ended up in a situation where your boundaries are constantly being triggered in that way, or consider consider the reflection. Uh, people that, that trigger us, they either need something, they need to learn something that we've learned, or they are reflecting us. So even if it seems like somebody else is acting very out of character and that you're not acting that way, it could be an internal thing. And that spirits just kind of brought them in that contrast to you to point that out. Um, this also has a fair amount to do uh, with money issues. So it's a good time to start saving money. And with coming recession type energy coming up, it's a really, really good time to start saving money. And we got the tower right below that. So, you know, the, that Murphy's Law, If you, when you're prepared, you're good. You know, if you've been working on building your roots over the last, like, seven, eight months um, or longer, you're probably going to be fine. But if you've not been preparing for that, you're probably going to get caught off guard financially, spiritually, emotionally. Now, remember, though, you either win or you learn. So these towers are coming in to over the next 48 hours to knock down anything that's unstable that wasn't really built on a good foundation. And that's a good thing. It means that you can pick up the pieces and rebuild it in a stronger fashion. And now would be a really good time to do that. Um, we have the Ace of Swords that comes in right underneath that. And what that tells me is that the towers... I'm going to say some of these towers are coming in because of whoever this feminine energy is. And this could be male, female, non-binary, any of it. But whoever is coming in with these secrets that either they're trying... I'm getting the strong sense because of the Mercury and Leo energy. A lot of people are going to see uh, people outing other people in attempt to try to prevent some kind of tower or to make some movement to uh, combat that Three of Wands held back energy. And... What I'm getting the sense of is that it's those towers they create that are going to create the truth, and it's going to be such a strong energy. It's an ace, so it means that you can use. Yes. It, may, it means that you're going to have a chance to eclipse that out and start over from whatever that is. You're going to be able to cut the truth out, and right beneath that the Ten of Swords. So we had the, the Ace of Swords to the Ten of Swords. So a lot of people are going to, you're probably going to be noticing some jumps even in karmic cycles. And maybe there's some people that, some friends or family or lovers or divine partners that you've been waiting on to hear communication from, and you've not been hearing from them it, because they keep repeating these, these cycles, especially like, you know, uh, two through nine. So they're probably going to be making some interesting jumps with this Mercury and Leo energy. And thankfully, the Ten of Swords is kind of a good and a bad card. It means you've been stabbed in the back a lot and that you're very anxious about things and very anxious about getting up. But it's also a completion of those thoughts and an ascension. And it's the end to toxic situations. Um, I'm just going to quickly look through here. Yeah, it looks like a fair amount of people are, are healing some some wounds that have to do with mother wounds and exes. There, there might still be some stagnation in terms of communication and or physical connections if you've been waiting on that. But spirit coming in the wheel of fortune is bringing in... Well, they're, <laughs> here's the irony. They're bringing in whoever this is to help shake things up. And look at that. That's beautiful. Right behind it, the sun. They're bringing in the sun, which is another Leo card. <laughs> um, and that, that's enlightenment. That's 19. That's the, the child. On, I, think I, was, I think I was just talking about that even in the channeled uh, reading. It's, it's healing of inner child wounds. It's that connecting to... You know, I'm kind of getting the song uh, Puff the Magic Dragon in your head. It's just that, that peaceful, calm, opening energy. And it's it's crown chakra energy. It's leading up to it. And it's looking like, yeah, it's looking like it's likely to be single season for a fair number of people. 
I'm not not necessarily over the next 48 hours, but that's going to be on the mind. People are looking for their wish fulfillment. They've been working hard and toiling, and it's time to get. It's already close to get, having to get time, time to get ready for harvest season. Um, with the moon card popping out here, I'm going to say, one, be aware of hidden enemies that may be around you, and also. Um, Remember to that when things don't feel like they're necessarily going in the way that your intuition feels like they actually are, have faith in spirit, have faith in yourself, have faith in the people that you love, and just recognize that the path is still unfolding. Whatever this, this energy that is that comes up over the next 48 hours is not necessarily going to be how it's going to stay. And if you can hold in your integrity in that place, you got... You got the Ten of Pentacles coming in. It looks like you've got some recognition coming in. Or you're recognizing somebody. But I am seeing a fair number of bratty energy cards in here too. And there's going to be a fair amount of people that are recognizing that they are still stuck in cycles that they've been in for a while. The, some of them, including that, that uh, reversed High Priestess energy might be dealing with this card, this justice card, which is karmics and things like that. And they might be feeling a little antisocial. I'm seeing a fair amount of new beginning energy, which means ending energy in there too. And messages coming slowly, but there's some drama, which Leos, I love you, but the drama does tend to follow you <laughs> or come from you sometimes. So recognize that. But a lot of people are also recognizing that and coming up, but you're going to a lot of us are going to have to face the consequences. That's what the Saturn retrograde energy is bringing in. Yeah, so next 48 hours, I'm not seeing a whole ton of communication energy from a lot of people other than the potential of some secrets coming to light and so the, the, the movement towards uh, what our heart really wants and, and, and the removal of the illusion of what we thought our heart wanted. Like if we, you thought that you needed to have a partner to complete you and make you a whole person, that illusion is fading away and you're recognizing that actually what you really want is somebody that you can share your life with who won't pop holes in the boat as you're trying to row it from shore to shore to keep things going. Somebody who might sing a song while you're in the boat and whatnot. And we've got the Emperor and Upright followed right by the King, or excuse me, the King of Cups. That's funny. Um, so maybe there's a Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio uh, around you or that sort of energy is popping in as King of Cups energy. But we got the Ace of Cups which is that, that new love, new beginning. So uh, a fair amount of, of, yeah, see this light, a fair amount of masculines and, and that can be male, female, whatever. If you identify in that divine masculine energy, they're freeing themselves. You're freeing yourselves to open up to higher powers at recognizing that you don't have to be beholden to traditional obligations. You can create your own traditions, or if you like the traditions, you can free yourself from what illusions you thought were creating those that are actually not. Um, I'm running low on time, but I'm going to see if I can pull one card for something to kind of ponder, a bit of advice to think about over the next 48 hours for anybody that feels like they'd like it. Oh, wow, okay, yeah, moon card popped right out there. With the Queen of Wands in reverse underneath. So, yeah, I think... It, and you know what? It kind of makes sense, too, because there's a fair amount of us when we're in... Uh, when we're not in our divine feminine energy, we're in toxic feminine energy. And when we do that, we actually tend to jump over and grasp onto uh, toxic masculinity. And same thing happens in reverse for those who are typically masculine... Can, you can see when they go into their toxic masculinity that they might start jumping into toxic feminine challenges. And so I, I'm kind of seeing that. And there's, there's a fair amount of Leo energy in here too. So be aware because this can be, this is a card that both means faith and it means uh, hidden enemies and both require you to trust your intuition in order to stay protected, in order to keep moving forward and to keep manifesting what it is that your your heart is calling you towards. And because this lovely queen is on the bottom, yeah, wow, okay, 
the one that landed right on the top of the deck, the tower, there are going to be some catty, vindictive, jealous types who are going to likely pop up into our energy fields within the next 48 hours, maybe a little bit after that too. Um, and they... They're going to try to burst bubbles, or you might, maybe you might feel like you need to be that person who breaks the mask of somebody and says, you know what, you're not all that in a bag of chips. Who knows? But be careful on that, because right now with Saturn in the position that it's in, you're going to, karma doesn't discriminate, <laughs> and it doesn't think, it doesn't necessarily... It does think about the spirit in which you do things, but it's still going to reverberate and come back out to you. It still creates a ripple effect. So be in your integrity and try to create healing connections whenever you connect with someone and take that catty low vibe energy out to the the woods and maybe dip in a stream and allow it to just flow away with you anyways if anyone would like a personal reading please go ahead and send me a message at madamthanatus at gmail.com otherwise i'm going to do the next 48 for each sign we'll see where it goes thanks so much